tonight with breaking news on the state's response to the coronavirus. Effective at midnight tonight, the state of California is under a shelter in place order. Good evening. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Under the order, people are only allowed to go outside for essential needs like medical attention or food. News 8's Lamore Abrams is live at Sharp Memorial Hospital with the governor's dramatic escalation in tone. Lamore. Well, Carlo and Marcelo, tonight the governor's decision comes after his grim forecast on coronavirus, predicting that more than half of Californians will be infected, hospitals will be overrun, and we will need thousands of new beds here in the state of California. It is a worst case scenario, he says, unless Californians act now and just stay at home. We can make decisions to meet moments, and this is a moment we need to make tough decisions. Governor Gavin Newsom taking his most aggressive stance yet in the fight against coronavirus. People. With 19 deaths and close to 1,000 infected in the state, the governor is ordering all Californians to shelter in place effective Thursday night. That we direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. The mandate requires Californians to stay at home unless they need to go out for absolute essential needs. Are people still doing essential work, people still providing essential services. People. Businesses not providing essential services like grocery stores and pharmacies must send workers home. Exceptions are made for health care workers, police, fire and other emergency responders. Authorities will not enforce the order. Rather, the governor is relying on people to do the right thing. There's a social contract here. People, I think, recognize the need to do more and to meet this moment. The strict new People rules come after the governor briefed President Trump, predicting that more than half of Californians, 25 million people, will be infected with coronavirus over an eight-week period, a scenario he says would require roughly 20,000 more hospital beds, double our capacity. I, I'm being very straight with you. And these are numbers I can assure you, governors, mayors, uh, administration across the country are are, are working with. Newsom is pledging to make use of California's hospitals, motels, Navy ships, even university dorms to staff more sick patients and emergency backup plans he hopes can be avoided if people stay in their homes and restrict social interactions, all to slow the spread of the virus. We need to bend the curve in the state of California. Newsom is asking for help from Congress, too, requesting $1 billion on top of the $1 billion just approved by the state legislature to support the state's medical response. We need to recognize the reality. Again, to recap, this order goes into effect at midnight and is in effect until further notice. Tonight, a lot of people are asking, where can we go? What can we do? Again, remember essential services. That means hospitals, grocery stores, pharmacies, banks. They are still open, but you can't go to your family's or friend's house until unless it is urgent, unless it is pressing. Tonight, even members of the legislature are stressing that try to flatten the curve, stay at home and stay away. That is the directive from the governor from the state of California tonight. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Lamore, thank you. And the latest data we have tonight, 105 cases of coronavirus have been reported in San Diego so far. That is an increase of 25 since yesterday. No one has died in our county, but officials warned today that the number of confirmed cases will jump. The numbers at this point are really only the tip of the iceberg. That iceberg is increasing in size under the water. At this hour, as we mentioned, there are 105 coronavirus cases in San Diego. That includes a first case of a person under 20. County libraries will no longer be offering curbside pickup. That's two to, two, just two days after announcing a plan to do so. Complying with the new state shelter in place order, most businesses are now shut down. Essential services, including public transportation, remain open. San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner is calling on officials in Baja, California to implement similar measures to help slow the spread of the virus. This is the Trump administration weighs whether to close the southern border to non-essential traffic. While seemingly practical, activists say the move would have disastrous effects, especially on the global economy. California, like Baja California, are huge agricultural states. So a lot of these products are going further into the countries and uh, it affects not only the border region, it affects the entire countries. So we really need to know what's going on and, uh, and we need to be prepared. Yesterday, Canada announced the closure of its border with the U.S., only allowing Canadians and some U.S. residents to enter. 
As the number of confirmed coronavirus cases climbs, some local nurses say they are not receiving the equipment they need to adequately protect themselves and the public as they handle patients with COVID-19. News 8's Richard Allen is live at UC San Diego Health in Hillcrest tonight, where a group of nurses spoke out this evening. Richard? Well, Marcella, that's right. The CDC earlier changed its guidance on dealing with routine COVID-19 patients, saying that surgical face masks are acceptable rather than using those N95 masks, which are still used in the ICU and during complicated procedures. But nurses here at UC San Diego Health are speaking out, saying they need access to these stronger protections in dealing with all COVID-19 patients to keep everybody healthy and safe. We need to take immediate action to protect people's health. These nurses at UC San Diego Health in Hillcrest spoke out Thursday night against what they say are inadequate protections when dealing with COVID-19 patients. This is not the time to be weakening our standards and protections. Earlier, the CDC altered its guidance for using masks when dealing with coronavirus patients, moving from airborne protections like N95 respirators to droplet contact protection, such as surgical face masks. We oppose the CDC's changes to its guidance. We also oppose UCSD's decision to lower their standards. These nurses say that by not using N95 respirators in dealing with all COVID-19 patients, the consequences down the road could be devastating as the number of coronavirus cases continues to climb. We need to stay healthy and we need the right staffing and the tool to do our job to protect the public. But UC San Diego Health says it does not have a shortage of personal protective equipment, but says it is carefully managing its supply, adding it is following the CDC's latest guidelines on masking. In moving to droplet contact protections like gloves, gowns, eye protection, and face masks, not N95 respirators when providing routine care for COVID-19 patients. However, staff here is continuing to use N95 respirators in the ICUs and while doing more complicated procedures like intubation. But these nurses say these revised protocols fall dangerously short of keeping everyone healthy and safe during this growing pandemic. This is simply not adequate and puts nurses, their families and the public at risk. And earlier today, the county's public health officer, Dr. Wilma Wooten, said countywide there is no shortage of N95 respirator masks. However, she did say that supplies of other protective equipment like gloves and goggles is beginning to dwindle. Carlo and Marcella. All right, Richard, thank you. The Chula Vista City Councilman who announced he tested positive for coronavirus over the weekend is tonight in the hospital. Council member Steve Padilla's family says his condition has worsened, and so he was admitted to UC San Diego's Thornton Hospital. He's being treated with a respirator to help with breathing difficulty. News 8 talked with Padilla earlier this week over the phone. He said it felt like the worst case of the flu. The council member says he is urging everyone to take public health warnings about coronavirus very seriously. And as the number of coronavirus cases across the country continues to surge, now passing 14,000, experts say those numbers will only continue to increase. Skylar Henry brings us the latest on the national effort from the White House. President Trump said there may be a glimmer of hope in the fight against the coronavirus. I think it could be a game changer. On Thursday, the president announced that two existing medications had been identified as potential COVID-19 treatments. One is an experimental Ebola drug. The other, hydroxychloroquine, was developed to treat malaria, but has been used as an arthritis medicine since the 1950s. It's been around for a long time, so we know that if it, if if things don't go as uh, planned, it's not going to kill anybody. Both drugs are now being tested in clinical trials. If they're effective, Mr. Trump says they will be fast-tracked for FDA approval. Optimism was in short supply elsewhere. The State Department issued a rare level four advisory, telling U.S. citizens they should avoid traveling outside the country. Those already overseas are urged to return at once. The number of coronavirus deaths in Italy now surpasses the total in China, where the virus emerged late last year. Chinese authorities, meanwhile, reported no new infections on Thursday, the first time that's happened since the outbreak began. The federal response to the coronavirus crisis continues to be hampered by shortages of medical equipment and supplies. 
There's not enough testing available right now to meet demand. The good news is that here they're starting up. This pandemic continues to wreak havoc on the world's financial markets. The Dow saw a modest gain Thursday, but economists are bracing for a potentially unprecedented surge in the number of people applying for unemployment benefits. Skyler Henry, the White House. The coronavirus has really stopped all of us, really, in our tracks. Businesses closed, jobs lost, lives put on hold. Now's the time we can come together to help our neighbors, though, impacted by this ongoing health crisis. If you're able, please join News 8, the San Diego Foundation, and our partners and give to the San Diego COVID-19 Response Fund. Your donation will help provide assistance with food security, rent, utility bills, and income replacement as well as things like gap funding and no interest business and community loans. 100% of donations will go to organizations helping San Diegans. So the money is being kept local. San Diegans impacted by COVID-19. We ask you to please donate now at sdfoundation.org slash COVID-19 or on the News 8 app. And it's just such an encouraging sign when they announced this fund, they had a $1.3 million dollar purse already, I mean, in the fund, and so far I think it's over four million, so really the response is tremendous. And it, we're going to need every penny of it and much more before this is all over.